Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the kinetics of your radio ulna joint. So under kinetics, we will cover what are the muscles that produce force and create supination and pronation at the radio ulna joint. And we will also cover the passive structure. But more about that we will be covering in the next video. So without any further ado, let's get started. So today we are going to cover the radio ulna joint kinetics and under this we have the main motion of supination and pronation right so supination is created by the supinators like your supinator muscle biceps brachii and anconius whereas pronation is created by your pronator teres and pronator quadratus majorly now the supinators in general are stronger than your pronators and this is de determined with your isometric testing okay so first we will start with our pronators so first muscle is your pronator teres and it produces pronation by pulling the radius if you can see this is the pronator teres and it is attached to the radius and it pulls the radius on the other side and creates this pronation movement similarly the supinator is also attached to radius over here from the lateral side so supinator you can see comes from the lateral side right whereas the pronator comes from the medial side because this is the ulna right so it comes from the medial side and supinator again pulls the radius and creates supination over here you can see radius had gone for pronation and then it pulls the radius back into supination so both of them work against each other and supinator is generally stronger than the pronators. Next, what is the function of your pronator teres? Apart from creating pronation at the elbow joint, it also creates slight amount of elbow flexion. As you can see, it crosses the elbow joint on the anterior aspect. It also stabilizes your proximal radio ulna joint and helps in maintaining the contact of the radius along with the capitulum of your humerus. So that's how it provides stability at your radio ulna joint, specifically the proximal radio ulna joint. Going on to the next muscle, we have our pronator quadratus, which is present lower down over here near the distal radio ulna joint, and it maintains stability, especially dynamic stability at the distal radio ulna joint. It also creates pronation force during resisted as well as unresisted and slow as well as fast pronation right so any kind of movement of pronation this muscles helps in that movement but apart from pronation it is also active it is they have seen that it's also active during supination so the deep head of your pronator quadratus is active also during resisted supination and that's how they think that this muscle plays a very important role in stabilization of your radio ulna joint during both supination as well as the pronation movement. We will cover more muscles that create this stability at the radio ulna joint in the next slide so stay tuned for that. But for now these are the two main pronators okay. Now the pronators are very much efficient in your neutral position but some studies have also shown that instead of neutral to pronation movement if the muscles go into supination and then come into pronation they are able to produce force much more efficiently so that means it is a better or efficient position for your pronators to be in so simply put if you want to create pronation the pronators will be much effective if they are taken into slightly stretched position and then you take into pronation instead of from the neutral position to pronation right so this is slight supination from here if you want to go into pronation it is much more efficient at doing it compared to going into pronation from a neutral position so that's what some studies showed but some studies also showed that they were pretty efficient at creating pronation from the neutral position as well next we are moving on to the supinator as we saw it creates this supination by pulling the radius and it is again the supinator muscle is active in slow as well as fast supination when your elbow is extended right when is your elbow is straight but as your elbow goes into flexion your biceps kind of takes over that means 
when your elbow is flexed and especially when your forearm is pronated your biceps is able to generate a really high supination torque at your elbow joint and this torque is almost four times greater than the normal torque that can be produced so biceps brachia is much more efficient when elbow is flexed and your forearm is in pronated position apart from these two muscles we also have anconius which is active in supination as well as pronation at the elbow joint so these are the major muscles that create the movement of supination as well as pronation at the radio ulnar joint now let's have a look at what are the structures that create the stability at the radio ulnar joint so under stability we have our pronator quadratus as we mentioned earlier we also have our extensor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi radialis brevis these are the three muscles which create a major stability at your radio ulnar joint specifically the distal radio ulnar joint apart from this there are also passive structures like your interosseous membrane that you can see over here there is also the articular disc tfcc which we have covered in the previous video and also the palmar and the dorsal radio ulnar ligament which again we have discussed in the previous video these structure also create passive stability at your radio ulnar joint and there is a lot to cover under this topic so we will cover that in the next video so for this slide we will focus on the active components and how they create stability at your radio ulnar joint first starting with the pronator quadratus that we have already seen the deep head of pronator quadratus it maintains dynamic stability that is basically during the movement it creates stability at the distal radio ulnar joint during both supination as well as pronation right the next one is the extensor carpi ulnaris that is present on the ulnar side of your hand the muscles or the tendon of your extensor carpi ulnaris they create this tension which helps the tendon to maintain the position of your ulna which is really small distally right so it has to maintain its position and be stable in every movement at the wrist as well as at the forearm and this extensor carpi ulnaris it helps to maintain the position of the ulnar head during supination as well as pronation and finally we have the third muscle that is extensor carpi radialis brevis which is on the radial side and its main function is to stabilize the forearm during gripping and also during pronation torque now what do i mean by pronation torque so if we take an example of a object which is heavy on this side and i'm holding it right so i'm gripping it and the object is pulling me into pronation right so that time the extensor muscles over here on the extensor side will create that extension and also supination to fight that pronation torque so that's where your extensor carpi radialis brevis will create that extension movement and supination movement to fight the pronation torque along with this it also produces your wrist extension for the supination torque so with that we finish off this topic in next video we will talk about the passive structure and how they create stability at the radio ulnar joint so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching